Democracy is easy. It's like stealing ice cream from a baby. I genuinely love the process of manipulating people online for money. We just want to predict your future behaviors. The generating data is the only These videos are all deep fakes. Synthesized content created using artificial intelligence. Fake, fake, disgusting news. Deep fakes will make for even more complicated arguments about what is fake news and what is real. And if seeing is no longer believing, the very real question is, could deep fakes weaken democracy? Democracy just doesn't work if people don't believe in it. The deep fake artworks used artificial intelligence and machine learning technologies to kind of hack the bodies, if you like, of famous celebrity influencers. Bill Posters is the artist behind these deep fake videos, known as the Spectre Project. Spectre is almost too powerful to comprehend. Two of the main questions we wanted to explore with the Spectre Project is what does it feel like when our personal data is used in unexpected ways by powerful tech companies? And how, as a result, can that change our understandings of today? To test Facebook's response, Bill posted the deep fake videos on Instagram, a social media platform owned by Facebook. The company downgraded the video's visibility. Spectre showed me how to manipulate you into sharing intimate data about yourself and all those you love for free. But that didn't stop this fake clip of Facebook boss Mark Zuckerberg going viral. That showed the potential for spreading disinformation online through deep fakes. A danger that's likely to increase as long as tech companies and politicians remain unsure how to deal with it. The power of deep fakes is an area of great concern, whilst these technologies exist in what is essentially a regulatory black hole. Image manipulation is already exploited by autocratic regimes. It's a dark art that goes back to Joseph Stalin, who made his enemies disappear. Happy to be here, guys. <laughs> AI today is capable of making deep fake videos like this. And then Tom Cruise walks in where comedian Bill Hader morphs into Tom Cruise. <laughs> you know, just like, yeah, oh, boom! As the technology advances, the danger is that deep fakes will be used to mislead voters in democratic countries. If you take away those tools that enable us to be able to sort out what's real from what's not, you make very poor decisions. Aviva Vajja is the founder of Thoughtful Technology Project. He worries about another problem, that deep fakes could be used as an excuse to help politicians escape scrutiny. You have the corrupt politician being able to say, oh, yeah, that video of me, that was fake. That brings us into a world where people won't know what they can trust. He believes the ultimate threat from deep fakes could be that more and more people opt out of democratic politics, a phenomenon he calls reality apathy. Reality apathy is when it's so hard to make sense of what's happening, people just sort of give up. Democracy just doesn't work if people don't believe in it. So what can be done to fight back? A group of scientists at Cambridge University are having a go. They have developed a computer game to teach people how to spot disinformation. So in the game, people essentially step into the shoes of a fake news producer, uh, and you build your way up to a fake news empire by spreading fake content online. Dr. Sander van der Linden, the game's designer, believes it will help people to distinguish fact from fiction. So your goal is to 
get as many followers as possible while maintaining your online credibility. So you can't be too ridiculous. And the first badge in the game is about impersonating other people online. Um, and of course, one example that we've talked about is deep fakes. So you create... So in the game, we test people before and after. And at the beginning, we found that people are duped by a lot of these techniques. But once they've played the game, they've become resistant and are able to identify them later on. Dr. Van der Linden's team have drawn inspiration from preventative medicine in their hunt to cure fake news. So just as you inject someone with a severely weakened dose of a virus to trigger antibodies in the immune system, you can do the same with information. People can essentially create mental antibodies and become immune against fake news. And essentially, everyone is their own bullshit detector. Today, I'm president, not because I'm the greatest, though probably I am. Deep fake technology means that faking videos is becoming as easy as faking words and photos. Until people learn to look at video with a more critical eye, there's a danger that deep fakes could be used to undermine democracy.